Well the O-Drive system is proven to be very reliable on a CNC setup and now I've got the X-axis working with a long table I can set it milling features and get on with other parts of the project. With this new long table I've now got 300 mil of travel on the x-axis so I'll be able to machine out a good number of parts in one go. And the x-axis has now got a perspex cover so I'm now not worried about where all the chips fly. I'm still running with the temporary controller box at the moment although it is growing on me and I'm quite impressed with the Arduino Mega 2560 where it still has plenty of spare capacity. So this mill is now just running on solar energy where this is a 1000 watt pure sine wave inverter where it's more than capable of running the spindle motor and with the brushless motors only pulling about 500 milliamps each and having 75 ampere hour of batteries in the battery box I'm able to run the mill around 6 to 8 hours at a time although I've only got a 50 watt solar panel attached to it so I will be able to make all the parts for the MGF just using solar power which was the intention in the first place this battery box is a little bit overprotected where every battery's got its own 7.5 amp fuse and then you've got individual fuses for each output. But it does sit in the house so I don't mind being overcautious. So each brushless motor needs a calibration first. Beep from the motor coils while it's calibrating. And it does one complete rotation and then rotates back. and that's it calibrated. And then the O-Drive knows exactly what the motor needs at each position. Although you can get it to calibrate once and then have it calibrated every time you switch it on because the encoders are not going to move anywhere although it does give me a little bit of confidence every time I switch it on. Then from the controller I'm able to jog each X and Y axis, eventually Z Firstly at 10 mil, then I can drop it down to 1 mil, 0.1 mil, I can even go down to 0.01 mil and 0.01 mil, not that you'd notice. Then from any position I can zero all axis or just the X or Y or Z and then get it to machine out the features. So a fresh piece of paper, I'm going to get the pen to draw out the fe all the features just to make sure that the program's running properly because you don't want it to mash up the part or break your expensive milling bits. So I've got a fresh piece of 1mm aluminium, or aluminium, depends where you live. And this will sit underneath this drive unit, so it will cover just this area. And that will hold on to the conduit that the cable runs through. So there's no more strain on the actual cable itself coming out the motor. This part that I'm going to be machining out now is a bottom cover of the X-axis drive unit. Where at the moment, both the X and Y are just dragging their cables around which isn't really ideal for the cables. So you can run each feature as many times as you want and in any order. So what I'm doing here is just marking out all the positions of the screw holes. So I can run that a couple of times where the first one can spot drill them and then the second run just drill them out. So it's a lot easier just to put the spot drill in once and then the drill bit in once rather than changing over each hole and lining up with crosshairs. And it's a lot more accurate with CNC. So what we need now is a sped up video. The XY coordinates are correct, although the display doesn't update when it reaches the destination. Although that's just one of many tweaks that I need to do in the Arduino sketch. So the first holes I'm going to do are these ones 
and these are going to clamp the part down to the table and I've chosen their location so not only do they fit in the table slots but also these four will be used for the cable ties to hold the conduit in place then you've got the mounting holes that will hold it to the bottom of the drive unit then you've got these two slots that allow you to adjust the tension on the belt a slot at the back so you can plug the rotary encoder in and then you've got the hole for the motor cable so all in all if I had to manually machine this not only would I get aching feet but also it would take me between four to six hours to do on this machine but we'll see how long it takes with all the features programmed in so I'll just make sure the milling bit won't smash into the clamps and this is where the pen comes in handy again whereas if that crashes into the clamps it just bends out of the way and as you can see the springs in the pen are actually pushing the nib towards the paper so first of all it's a bit of spot drilling for the mounting holes a lot quicker than doing it all manually drill out the holes with a 6mm bit Then a 3mm end mill to run around that outside feature. Yes, I did start this at nearly midnight, but it's about as loud as a sewing machine, and it'll be a lot quieter once I've fitted a brushless spindle motor. Also, this is only running at around 750 RPM, where this spindle motor can actually go to 2000 RPM, although a brushless spindle motor will be able to go a lot faster well that depends on the bearings also the spindle motor will have an encoder fitted so I should be able to machine tap without any specialist tools although we'll have to wait and see on that one So the next feature, as I can do it in any order, is a 12mm hole for the motor cables.
So our last two slots. Then spot draw all the mountain holes and draw them all out. Yes, I do really need a piece of wood that goes all the way across, but that's all I had at the time. So a little bit of deburring and there's a finished part and that took just under 45 minutes to make. So that is a huge time saving. Right, it's so the ultimate test, let's see if it fits. That's not too bad considering it's the first fully machined out part that I've done. I'm quite happy with that. Although I forgot the cable ties. So put that all back together, see what it looks like. There you go, now I'll just pull the conduit around rather than stressing all the cables. And now it's time for me to get the x-axis done. So I'll leave you in peace and I'll see you in the next video.